uh, fellow Hot Wheels collectors. Um, I have been a bit unwell over the past couple of days, but went into town today and Poundland. Obviously, the collectors stay away from Poundland because I have found a huge amount of cars. Okay, first up we have this very nice 2008 Chevy convertible ZR1 on a Matchbox long card. And I just love the colours of this. That is a very nice, very nice shade of red. And a very cool car to put it on as well. I'm actually surprised at the detailing on this. It is very nice and it's... Uh, E09 is the case, but it says 2011 Mattel, so I'm thinking this is an old 2012 card. Absolutely lovely colours on there. Anyway, the other thing as well is it looks like I was right. Obviously the USA have decided to give us a load of old, uh, cheapo, uh, leftover 2012 cars. Because we have a whole load here. Or 2011, I'm not sure, but they're definitely not that old. Anyway, here we have a very nice 63 Corvette slip window on long card. Very nice card on the back there. Nice blue as well. You can see it's a split window. Absolutely lovely in the background there. Next up, one that I did actually mention I left behind in another video, and that was Troy Soldier. Well, oh, I finally got one today. Quite a heavy model as well, this one. Very nice uh, little toy car this. I don't know if this would be a good track car looking at it. It does look like it would be quite a good track car. I'm not so sure on the loops and curves though because the back wheels are a bit exposed. But either way it is a very nice car indeed. It's got a cool uh, mohawk on the back there. Well, I'm hoping that that does come out in 2013 again because it's a nice model. 68 Mercury Cougar in blue. I haven't found the blue version. Got the bright orange version on short card and remade um, Team Hot Wheels car, which they seem to have stopped selling now in Poundland. Obviously, sold out of them. Very nice car indeed. The other one I did spot as well was the F1 lookalike car, which had the Team Hot Wheels on. I wasn't so sure on that, didn't really take my fancy. 70s Plymouth Barracuda in purple or pink. Not sure if this is a Walmart exclusive or just a recolouring. Still, absolutely lovely colours though. It's a very interesting shade of pink that. I know there was a load of exclusives. Perhaps maybe just leftovers or just ones that didn't sell very well. I know for a fact they are using that model a fair amount. Might be time to put that on the shelf for now, guys. Just sort of like concentrate on bringing back some older models that we haven't seen for a while and putting that one on the shelf because we're getting a bit bored of that now. Next up we have the Aston Martin 1-77 in white. And this one I have to be a bit uh, cautious with because it's almost a flipper. It does almost practically flip over in the case. I mean it is close to being a flipper but thankfully it's not. Lovely shade of white though. I think this one I already have in silver. Very nice colour anyway. That's why I grabbed it. Next up we have the 70s Monte Carlo, absolutely lovely car this, looks like it's got a metal base, well, it could be plastic, can't really tell. Slight error as well because it's got the back end slightly pushed out of line but I think that might just be the plastic aligning on the back end there, just it's slightly out, still pretty though, lovely shade of gold, some very nice detailings. Next up we have the extremely nice 77 Pontiac Firebird in green. Got the green version now. And the only version I am missing is the red version because 2013 when they brought out the blue version. I think 2012 for the first colouring of this one was the blue uh, was the red version, which I do actually need. So again, could be after that one or might be looking out for that one. Just depends. Next we have the 85 Chevrolet Camaro IROC Z in red, first colouring. The second one they brought out was the very nice black one, which is gorgeous. I now have the red version of this. Very cool car indeed. 
And this is from the USA because it has actually got all the stuff on the back end as well. Look at all the detail. It was apparently made in 85. Detroit, Michigan, USA. General Motors. Named after the iconic race of champions. The IROC Z comes with a 305 TPI 5 point litre V8 engine in 4 speed automatic. It's fast and powerful and gets the job done. Yep, but it's quite a rare beast now because most Camaros. Once the 90s came along, racers grabbed them up and the engine, you can pretty much guarantee, is knackered. Now, I don't usually like the Minis, but uh, when it says new model, this is the Mini Cooper S Challenge. It's very nice in white. They've brought out a couple more versions of this. However, Hot Wheels, I have to disagree with what you're writing on here. Birthplace, Oxford, England. Eh -eh. The original Austin Mini, that little one that has the removable shell, that you can claim was definitely made in England. This monstrosity wasn't made in England. It is assembled, and that's even basic. It's not even assembled here. It is literally, I think all we do in England is literally just put the Mini badges on, possibly install whatever computer system, but it is not made in England. The car is shipped over as a whole thing from Germany or from wherever it's made and we just claim it because the Mini was officially born in the UK. But officially it is not a UK car, at least the newer Minis are. Again, the original little Austin Mini, yes they were made in the UK. That newer BMW lookalike Mini, no. Anyway, enough of that. We now move on to the 70 Camaro Road Race, one that I must have missed. Cards are slightly bent here, so this is obviously where I saw that they've probably been hanging around and they've just packaged them badly. So again, bad on the USA staff, but oh well. Lovely shade of red this. Lovely colour. And a lovely car in general. And then finally, with faster than ever wheels, we have the Camaro Convertible Concept. Now very, very nice triple C. And as you can see, the faster than ever logo up there. Which, believe it or not, we don't get in the UK. But we do know that these are faster than ever wheels because it has the very nice uh, chrome or Zymec or some kind of um, circuitry or some kind of um, type of bearing on the wheel there, which makes it go super fast around the track. Okay, that's all the regulars. Now then, they had some more cars of the decade in there. Woohoo! I think I basically brought pretty much every single one. I'm still missing a fair amount. I will check uh, South Texas Diecast and see which ones I am missing. But like I say, anyway, first up from the naughty we have the 10 Camaro SS. Now on this one, I think the only one I'm missing now is the 92 Mustang and the 49 Merc. Because the others on here I do have. Again, absolutely lovely. Lovely silver shading there. Very slick, very colourful indeed. I do have to admit, I do like my Camaros, they are very nice. I'm not sure if I have already got this one or not. It's the Toyota A86. Wasn't sure if I'd already grabbed this one, so not 100%. If not, then oh well, I've got one for uh, up for trade. It's very nice, this one. Very interesting car. I think the only one in this one I'm missing, or well, I'm missing quite a few in this one actually. Uh, I'm pretty much missing all of them, other than the 71 Plymouth uh, GTX and this one. But the rest of them I am missing a fair amount of. I just have to see which ones in which. The 50s, we get the very nice 56 Ford F100 panel van, which is sadly the. Um, made version with the bonnet attached so the bonnet no longer rattles it just basically sort of like stays in place lovely bronze colour I do have to admit though some of these some of the detail on these um, on these things here are actually pretty cool I do like them that's why I am buying quite a fair amount going right back to the 30s we have the neat streeter which is a very cool uh, hot rod type car one that I've not actually seen before. This must be a very new casting. Quite heavy as well. 
And if you are wondering, yes, I did get asked in the power store. Ooh, are you a collector? Yes. You get used to that after a while. Okay, from the 70s we have, of course, the classic 70s Ford Mustang Match 1. In the very nice, beautiful blue colouring. Very nice blue. The only other version of these I've got, I think, is the 2012 short card or long card version. Uh, on the Team Hot Wheels version. And somewhere over in the open collection, the uh, black one with the skull flame on it. Again, this one though, very pretty indeed. Very nice. Good find. Next up we have one hell of a heavy one, this. Which is the 65 Volkswagen Fastback. Now, of course, naturally, anything VW related in the UK is going to go very quickly. Because VW is a very popular model. And this, this is a very heavy car. Do you know, I reckon what I need to do is basically find a small set of scales, like uh, drug users use. And basically sort of like, just stick them on the scales. Because, I mean, some of these cars, they weigh a fair amount. I mean, I thought the 8 crate was heavy, but this, this is fairly heavy. In very nice colours, though. The only main problem I do, of course, have with this is the card art. Looks like it was printed on the uh, ink. The inkjet was beginning to run out a bit. It looks like sort of like the colours are a bit sort of faded. Still gives it that nice appeal look, though, I suppose. Anyway, from the 40s, we now, of course, have the classic 40s Woody. This has uh, been around for quite some time, this car. 79 it says on the base there. So, uh, since 79 this car has been around. It's still a very popular model today. Again, the only reason why it was called a Woody is because back in the 1940s, after uh, the Second World War, we were pretty much short on materials. So cars were made out of what came natural, which is wood. Which is why most of your period war cars if you find them, will probably just be the remains of a chassis or a shell because the wood's all rotten away. Again, absolutely lovely to see that. It is sort of my favourite car. Hard to find though because collectors do grab the woodies. I shall leave that one for last. Next up we have the 40s Ford Coupe. I'm not sure if I already had this one. I think I had the 40s soft top version. Absolutely lovely colours this. I do have to admit though, um, I haven't seen any T-Hunts or Supers, so perhaps maybe we are getting only the basics, which is a shame. Next up we have the 57 Bel Air, or the 57 Chevy, with the blown engine. This is the one with the blown engine in it. A popular model, but not exactly very popular amongst fans. Some prefer sort of like the uh, one without the uh, engine in it. Again, I do have uh, two versions, or I have... I have two versions of this. I have the ordinary version which you've seen on the short card, which is a new for 2013. And I also have a real rider, California Custom, somewhere up in one of these boxes here. Which I have shown you in a previous video. And most finally we have a Cars of the Decade, the 90, the customised C3500 truck. This one, I love this one, purely for sort of like the decos on it. Fan of purple I am. You can see the beautiful colour. Look at the colour on the back end of that. Look at that. Hey, beautiful that. Beautiful pinstriping. And I think I am almost near a complete set. Anyway, one of the greatest finds that I found there, and the first thing I recognised was the 2013 Carbonator. I am really happy to have the 2012 and 2013 Carbonator. However, I am missing the T-Hunt for 2013. That is going to be an interesting model to try and find. But again, there's the 2013 Carbonator. I can't wait to see if they do release a 2014 Carbonator. It's a good celebrational one, this, because it sort of does look like a champagne bottle. Okay, admittedly, you've got the uh, ring cork underneath, and it's sort of like perfect for opening bottles. But again, it actually looks like a proper champagne bottle. So, again, very well done. So, that is the huge stack of £23 worth, so 23 cars. And, uh, yeah, there was a fair amount more there. I did leave some there. I'm not a greedy collector, otherwise I would have gone away with sort of like the whole entire collection. 
Also as well, there were a lot of matchbox there. So if you did miss out on uh, any US um, long carded, perhaps maybe check around with some UK collectors, see if they can go into some of the pound stores. Again, it's a mix to a vary. Some of the pound stores will sell Hot Wheels. Only now, uh, today, have I seen them selling the Matchbox. Now, again, Matchbox is quite popular. Because again, Matchbox is more realistic. Hot Wheels is more sort of sporty. So it's a win-win situation. Anyway, thanks for watching. And, well, it's going to be fun trying to categorise this lot. Bye for now.